Hello and welcome back to Scotland Shop on the Sofa. I'm John and I'm Carrie and this month we have been learning all about one of Scotland's wealthiest and grandest families, Clan Keith. The Keith family took their name from the lands of Keith in East Lothian. In 1010, King Malcolm II of Scotland was fighting against the Danish army when a warrior from the Chatty tribe came to his aid, killing the enemy's general Camus with one well-placed stab of his sword. The king was so grateful and impressed, he awarded the warrior the name Marbachair Chamwi, meaning the Camus Slayer, and the lands of Keith. Years later, a Norman knight and adventurer called Hervey was exploring Scotland when he came across these enchanting lands. He also found himself entranced by the Marbachair's heiress. The pair married and in 1150, King David I granted them a charter for the local area, making Hervey the earliest recorded originator of Clan Keith. While the Keiths had their start in East Lothian, a combination of charm and friends in high places soon allowed them to expand their lands. Robert I, the Bruce, gifted a royal forest in Aberdeen called Hull Forest to Sir Robert Keith in 1308 to thank him for his deep loyalty as a friend. Later in the 1300s, Sir William Keith acquired grand estates in Buchan and the Mearns by marrying the daughter of Sir Alexander Fraser. These estates included the famous Donata Castle, which then became the principal seat of Keith Earls. Sir William's brother, John, enjoyed an equally profitable marriage, wedding the heiress of the great Chain family, securing the expansive Inverugi estate for the Keiths. Clan Keith have held numerous stunning castles over the years. Donato Castle makes a striking image. It sits on top of a rock, jutting out over the North Sea, just south of Aberdeen. It is not only notable for its imposing appearance, but also for its versatility. Since it was built, it has served as a host for multiple royal visitors, the hiding place of precious jewels, and even the home of a lion and a bear. The story began long ago, as Donator Rock has been inhabited by various groups since the beginning of the fourth century. But the most legendary period of its history began when the site came into Sir William Keith's hands at the end of the 14th century. Sir William quickly started work, building the first stone castle to stand on the cliff, known as the Keep. However, just as William was beginning to see the spoils of his labour, disaster threatened to strike. Pope Benedict XIII caught wind of what was going on and excommunicated him for building a castle a site designed to defend against and often perpetrate violence on sacred soil or holy ground. Luckily, William was able to win back favour by building a new church near Donata and paying a fee to the Pope. In 1458, the Keiths experienced a major increase in status when King James II named another Sir William Keith the first Earl Marischal, which made Donata the clan's hereditary seat. Over the following years, the family added to their grand home, crafting some classic features of a noble castle, such as fortifications and gun ports, along with a few more unusual amenities. In 1593, George Keith, the fifth Earl Marshal, bought a lion to keep as a pet at the castle. It slept in a small stone kennel, which is now known as the Lion's Den. Unfortunately for the poor animal, the Marshal's wife was not a big fan of its constant roaring and growling, so she ordered that it be killed. The Earl, bereft, got a new exotic pet to replace the lion, this time picking a bear. We wonder how the Countess felt about that. Donata also played a significant role in contemporary Scottish politics and even royal affairs. During the British Civil War in the mid-1640s, Donato helped to preserve the Scottish crown jewels. Charles I, King of Scotland and England, was executed in 1649 by Oliver Cromwell. The next year, however, his son, Charles II, journeyed to Scotland, determined to take back the land and the royal position. Cromwell was incensed and instructed his army to invade Scotland immediately. 
He had already destroyed parts of the English crown jewels, so it was clear to Charles that the iconic honours of Scotland would be his next target. The King called on the help of the powerful Keith family, instructing the Earl Marischal to hide the jewels at Donutter Castle. They were held there until Donutter was attacked, endangering the sacred artefacts once again. Luckily, the honours were carefully lowered from the castle down towards the sea, where a local woman received them under the pretense of gathering seaweed. She took them to a nearby church where they were hidden for years until they could be safely retrieved. You can now see them at Edinburgh Castle. Donata was sold in 1717 and left to crumble until Lord and Lady Cowdery bought the site in 1919 and started an extensive restoration project. Today, Donata is open to the public and is a very popular tourism spot. Donata also had a sister site, Fetteresso Castle, which was owned by the same Earl. Fetteresso was rich with classic Scottish design elements, such as crow-stepped gables and defensive battlements. A stylish dovecot built to house pet doves and pigeons was added in the 17th century and still stands on the grounds today. We don't know when exactly the Keith family left Fetteresso. In 1659, a woman named Jean Hunter lived on the site. She was accused of being a witch and was tragically hanged within the grounds. The castle continued to change hands over the 18th and 19th centuries and was sadly left to fall into disrepair, spending a chunk of the 1950s with no roof. It was eventually partially restored before being split into seven grand houses, which are now privately owned. Our final Keith home for today tells a grislier tale about the family's heyday. Just north of Wick, Cave Ness, lays the land of Ackergill. This used to be the territory of the Chain Clan, until Reginald Chain, the clan chief, died in 1350, leaving no male heir. One of his daughters married John Keith, who therefore claimed the land as belonging to the Keith family. While the history isn't entirely clear, it is thought that John's son built the Tower of Ackergill in order to keep up with Sir William Keith, who had just crafted the impressive Donotter. Ackergill was the subject of much dispute between the Keiths and the Sinclairs throughout the 16th and 17th centuries and changed hands many times. But Clan Keith still managed to build on the site brew houses, stables, stone dovecotes, and small wooden barns were added to the land surrounding the tower creating a thriving community with the Keiths at its centre. In the 1500s, the clan built a courtyard wall to surround the whole place, offering more protection against the frequent raids from the Sinclairs. While Clan Sinclair posed the biggest threat to Ackergill, it was a feud with Clan Gunn that gave the castle its most notorious ghost story. Lachlan Gunn lived nearby in Braemore with his daughter Helen, who became renowned for her enchanting beauty. She was desired by countless men, but her cousin, Alexander Gunn, was the only one she wanted to be with. The pair were engaged and deeply in love. However, Dougald Keith of Achergill could not get Helen out of his mind. He was desperate and wasn't used to not getting his way. On the night of Helen's wedding, Dougald rallied a group of fellow Keiths to accompany him to Braemore where they kidnapped the unsuspecting Helen and took her to Ackergill Tower where she was kept prisoner. Helen was devastated to lose both her new husband and her freedom. She couldn't bear to stay trapped in the castle, so she ventured up to the top of the tower and threw herself over the battlements, landing on the treacherous rocky ground below. Thing. <laughs> Ever since, there have been frequent reports of ghost sightings at Ackergill. People talk of spotting a forlorn looking woman in a green dress, whispering, crying and roaming the, the grounds. Others have spoken of feeling unexplained cold spots, seeing strange lights or feeling that they're being watched. Ackergill is now privately owned. We wonder how its current residents get on with its live-in spectre. Clank Keith is blessed with a wealth of distinguished and talented members, 
One famous Keith was even once referred to as the most exciting woman in the world. Eartha May Kitt was born in 1927 as Eartha May Keith in a small town in South Carolina. Her mother was of Cherokee and African descent and her father was white, although Kitt never found out exactly who he was. Eartha experienced frequent bullying as a young child and was sent from relative to relative, never feeling fully accepted or at home. Things started to look up when she was sent to live with Mami Kitt in Harlem, New York City, where she studied at the Metropolitan Vocational High School, beginning to hone her skills in the performing arts. Her talent quickly became apparent and she began her career on Broadway, appearing in the 1945 original production of the musical Carib Song, and soon after went on to release a flurry of hits as a solo artist. In the 1950s, she enjoyed six top 30 songs in the US and a UK top 10 song, Under the Bridges of Paris. In the 1960s, she starred as Catwoman in the final season of the TV show Batman, becoming one of the first black women to achieve mainstream TV success in the US. She even challenged racist stereotypes as a love interest to her white co-star, Adam West. Kit was determined, bold and unafraid of asserting herself. However, one instance of this bravery threatened to end her career. In 1968, she passionately expressed her reservations about the Vietnam War while at a White House luncheon. Causing an enormous backlash and criticism, she struggled to book jobs for years. Thankfully, Kit returned to Broadway in 1978, starring in the original production of Timbuktu, and earning a Tony Award and nomination. Later in the 2000s, Kit was discovered by a whole new generation when she starred in the Disney films The Emperor's New Groove and Halls. She even won two Daytime Emmy Awards for her work in The Emperor's New School. Kit also formed the Kitsville Youth Foundation, a non-profit organisation that supported young people living in poverty in Los Angeles and was a vocal advocate for LGBTQ rights. It is obvious that Kit was driven by a strong moral code and passion for improving the world. She died on Christmas Day in 2008, but even posthumously, she continues to entertain and inspire to this day. Our next Keith is Alan Keith, born on the 19th of October 1908, a British radio presenter. At the time of his death, aged 94, he was named as the longest serving voice on British radio. Alan was born in Hackney, London, to Russian Jewish parents and studied at Dame Alice Owens School in Islington until he gained a scholarship to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art in 1926. He graduated in 1928 and by 1935 had already made a name for himself at the BBC performing in numerous radio plays and acting as an interviewer for In Town Tonight. He launched his most famous venture in 1959, when he began the show Your 100 Best Tunes. It was a simple premise. Keith would play his 100 favourite songs on air for the listening audience. At first, producers predicted that the show would run for a maximum of six months, but they changed their minds once they saw how quickly the programme was picking up steam. Listeners would write in to voice their opinions, so Keith challenged them to send in their own picks. This interactive format proved to be extremely popular, and Your 100 Best Tunes turned into one of the longest running radio shows of all time. Keith was awarded an OBE for his extensive services to broadcasting in 1991 after having spent almost 60 years at the BBC. In March of 2003, at the age of 94, he announced that he was retiring from his hit programme. It seems that he inherited an astonishing drive and work ethic from the early members of the Clan Keith. We would like to wrap up by talking a bit about the beautiful Keith tartans we stock here at Scotland Shop. Clan Keith's tartan features green as its main colour complemented by a black check pattern. We offer two variations, Keith Ancient and Keith Modern. The Ancient version 
showcases softer colours, including a mossy green and a slate grey. While the modern option is dark and bold, made up of a deep green and striking dark blue and black. We hope you've enjoyed listening and learning about the mighty clan Keith. If you'd like to discover more, please head over to our website, read our blogs, and subscribe to our YouTube channel to enjoy a wealth of Keith content.